Hello, this is Andrew Perkins, and this is part 5 in creating a blog using the Cake PHP framework. In this video, we will learn how to create a form and use that form to add a new post to our database. So we'll be doing the create part of CRUD, create, read, update, and delete. In your text editor, under app, under controllers, open up posts underscore controller dot php. And we'll need to create a new action. We'll create an action called add. And the first thing we need to do is to understand how to access the data after it's been submitted through our form. You might be used to using the post variable and passing in the name of the form field that you want to get. So in this case, if we had a text input field and its name was title, we could grab that value by using post title. Um, the way that you should do this in Cake PHP is by using this data, and it works in the same way, except that it formats it all of the when the form is submitted, all of those form values are formatted properly in an array, and it's in a structure that Cake PHP expects the data to be set before it's sent to the database and saved. So we can now send this data and use that to submit our data to our database. And we do that by first, we will use an if statement, and we'll check if this data is not empty. By checking that this data is not empty, this ensures that the form has been submitted. And we can now save this data to our database. And we do that by calling the model save method. So we call this, the name of the model is post, and we call the save method. Every time you create a model inside of CakePHP, it'll automatically inherit this save method via CakePHP. So what we pass to the save method is the data from the form, and that's all stored inside of this data. Not only does the model's save method save the information to the database, but it also returns true or false based on whether the save was successful or not. So we can use this in a conditional statement saying if the save was successful, oops, we can then output a success message, message to the user. We'll use the session components set flash method. The set flash method creates a one-time message that will display to the user and it's available for only one request so if the page is refreshed the message will disappear. So in our case when they submit the form if the post was able to be saved to the database it's going to send them a message and we can just send a string here and make it any message that we want so we'll say the post was successfully added and now we want to redirect them to our index page so that they can view the new post so we'll use the controllers redirect method and we simply pass in an array and the key is action so we're specifying redirect to an action and the value is the action that we want to redirect to we want to redirect to our index action and now we want to provide an else clause here in case the save was unsuccessful in the event that something went wrong and it was not able to be saved we'll want to give them a different message so we'll use the session components set flash method again and we'll send them a message of the post was not saved please try again and this will re-render the form tell them of the error saying the post was not saved and they can fill the form back out and submit it again. So now we're ready to create our view under app, under views, and under posts. We'll create a new file and this will be the view for our add action. We call it add.ctp. We'll create an h2 tag and we'll say add a post. And here we're going to be using the Cake PHP form helper method. So open up your PHP tags. The first, first method that we want to use is the form helpers create method, which will create the form for us. So we echo out form 
create and what we pass to it is the name of the model for the form that we're submitting. We're going to be using the post model and the second parameter that we pass to it is an array. It'll be a key value of specifying the action that the form should submit to. So we specify to submit to the add action and now we need to create our form field to enter in a title so we echo out form and we specify input this is the input method and what we pass to it is the name of the field that we want to create it for we want this to be for our title so we call it title we'll create another input using the input method of the form helper and this time it's for our body field so we specify body and now we need to close the form and create our submit button and we can do that in one line we echo out the form helper and we're going to use its end method the end method not only creates the closing form tag but if we pass in a string to it it will be the text for the submit button so we can make our submit button say create a post and we'll save that and if we go to our browser and we access our posts add action we can see our newly created form and here is the text field for well the text input field for the title and the text area for the body if we view our source code we can see that it created the form and it automatically set the method to be post and it created the action to submit to our add action and here is the input field that it created for our title as you can see the title and it created a text area field for our body you can see the text area was created here and it's for the body so let's test it out and see if it works we'll create a title our new title and we'll input some text for the body so we'll say here's some content for our new title post and if we hit the create a post button you can see that it has redirected us to our index page it's displaying the message saying the post was successfully added and here is our new post that we just added to the database so we can now view it by clicking on its title and if you notice the flash message has disappeared it's only available for that one request so when we changed pages to our view action here it disappeared and we can view the post in its entirety and we see that when we created the post CakePHP automatically handled the created and modified fields it inserted the current dates into those and so if we'd edit this post as well it would change the modified field uh, we can't edit yet we will learn how to edit in our next lesson the next video and I'll go a little more in depth into the form helper especially the input field because if you noticed all we did was specify that this one's for the title and this one's for the body we didn't actually differentiate that this one is a text input and the body field is a text area but if you look at our source code it knew to do that it generated an input field for our title and the type is text and for our body it knew to generate a text area field and that's for our body so I'll be going a little more in depth in how that worked in the next video and we'll learn how to edit posts